Hey, what's up guys? Shelvage here. Tonight I want to talk about shoe trees, specifically, you know, the value in different types and whether it's worth it. First, I want to get something off my chest that's kind of jumped into the channel over the last couple of days. It's not isolated to the individual that made the comment. Accusations against a shoemaker questioning their legitimacy. Crazy to make accusation that has no actual like physical evidence of somebody holding a shoe in their hand or photographic evidence. And it makes no sense that somebody else can spin something up and that can be used for the foundation of accusing and potentially hurting somebody's livelihood. I'll kind of dive into this more probably over the weekend in a video, but needed to kind of address this and just get this off my chest. It was really annoying. Cool. So now back to the actual topic I wanted to chat about shoe trees. As we all know, there's, there's a wide variety of shoe trees, everything from your typical cedarwood uh, shoe tree from like Woodlore on a generic shape to kind of fit all shoes to uh, something like this, which is made based off of that specific last and that size to bespoke shoe trees like this that are fully lasted. Are they worth it? Is there a big benefit going from one to the other? Kind of give you my thoughts on it. For purposes of the conversation, I'm just going to use this one from Carmina as your semi-lasted shoe tree and this is kind of equal as the option that you would probably see from like TLB these like ready to wear mid-range Goodyear welded brands are going to have a branded shoe tree that is offered like with their with their specific shoes with their specific options and typically the way that these are kind of fitted is that it's like a generic fit based off of the uh, average size of that brand shoes the, the next category that we'll, that we'll touch on here is the two shoe trees that we're looking at, which I say is a step above um, as far as like the accuracy. This is an extremely well made shoe tree. This is from Yim Shoemaker. It's very, it's made of very high quality materials and the fit on this is extremely well done. This is a shoe tree from Antonio Meccariello. And this, as you can see, this is his Hawks Bill Last. It is very unique and very distinct in shape. So you can kind of tell like that is an obvious kind of like perfect pairing. Now stepping up to kind of what I would say is the top of the line shoe tree options or what you would, what you would see or what you would associate with top of the line shoes. So these are both bespoke level shoes. This is a bespoke shoe from Ichigo Ichie. And this is an Aram bespoke shoe from Antonio Meccariello. So we look at this, this shoe tree is unique in the sense that it is a three-piece shoe tree. The way that this works is obviously you have a piece for the heel, a piece for the uh, instep forward and the forefoot, and then you have the middle piece, which actually creates the full shoe tree and is really designed to replicate like the full, the full last of the shoe. If I were to mistakenly flip that around you can obviously it's not going to line up the pieces and it's not going to fit correctly so that's what the numbers are for this is your typical full bespoke uh, exact copy of the last shoe tree it's got a hinge but it also has this special unique feature of the screw so i'm going to just take this out our both of these style shoe trees are intended to be exact replicas of the last that was used for the shoe now one thing i'm going to i'll use these for examples because these will be the best to uh, demonstrate the example with. You can't just take it and put it straight into the shoe like this. It's not going to fit. So what you need to do is you have to turn it. And then as you're inserting it, continue to turn. And that's how you're going to get it in. There's no way I'd be able to get this in if I did it like that. So I'm just going to kind of lay it in sideways. And as it begins to go in, you just turn it. Then I'll put the heel piece in. Grab this, you want to make sure the number lines up. So that's the 28. And that's what you see back here. And perfect. You just wrap the string around. And the string is another critical function as far as the uh, the shoe tree goes because like the numbers, um, it just helps to make sure that the owner or the client doesn't mix up or lose any of the pieces, kind of rendering the shoe tree <laughs> useless. Circling back to the beginning, trying to answer that question. Are they worth it? Is it worth it to get a bespoke shoe tree like either one of these? Or are you fine just getting that generic Woodlore shoe tree? My thought on it is like the Woodlore shoe tree does the job. As you go up into the various levels, I think once you get into a shoe tree that is designed off of a real last, the same last that's used for the shoe, 
whether you have one done that has springs in it, it has a hinge, it has three pieces like this, that's really kind of when you're getting into a more appreciation for the aesthetic, for the overall experience of that shoe. If I'm gonna have a shoe that's a thousand plus dollars, $25 for a shoe tree or $75 for a shoe tree to maintain that for a decade or more, I'm gonna go with that extra $50 investment from the $25 to the $75 option just to kind of maintain the shoe in the long run, keep it as close to the original shape as intended. That being said, I think it's really up to each of us individually to kind of decide if that extra money is worth it or if it's really not something that you're going to see benefit or you're going to enjoy having. Hopefully this was helpful kind of seeing the different options that were out there, how they actually fit in the shoe and functionally speaking, if there's a huge benefit or not in getting the more premium option. Let me know what your thoughts are. Let me know if you have any questions on the topic. And as always, I appreciate you watching and your support, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.